I'm Phil Murphy. Welcome into the ESPN eSports studio. You may have heard about SK Telecom T1. Faker won a couple world championships, known worldwide. But this year, they were a non-factor in the League of Legends ecosystem, so they gutted the roster and have rebuilt around the unkillable Demon King, bringing in world-class support, Mata, and some young talent across the board. To break down the action, I'm joined by our very own Jacob Wolf. Jacob, Jacob walk us through this SKT rebuild. It's not the first time they've done this, and the previous time that they did it was after Season 4 when they failed to make the World Championship that year. So this is a team that since sort of the beginning of its existence in late 2012, early 2013, has made the World Championship every single year except 2014 and 2018. And so when you look at it, to them, it's, it was sort of it was heartbreaking. You know, this team has won multiple World Championships. Faker has sort of been the centerpiece of this team. He's the most popular player in the world. He's one of the most skilled players in the world. Such a storied player. And so to not make it to the World Championship is, is really bad for them o overall as an organization. It's definitely, you know, they're the Alabama of, of uh, League of Legends at this point. And you look at it, and it makes a ton of sense for me is, is to kind of blow it up. Mata is a good addition, also a former World Championship, won on Samsung Galaxy White in 2014, that year that SK Telecom did not make it to the World Championship. And so looking at it overall, this was the right call for them. And I think rebuilding around Faker overall is, is a good thing. And I think bringing in people like Teddy and some of these others that have played but have not had that opportunity to play on that good of a team and in that good of an environment, I think it will certainly usher in some much needed change for this SK Telecom T1 team and hopefully revitalize Faker who has uh, spoken a little bit about being a little bit burned out after so many years of just hard-nosed competitive play. So hopefully this kind of revi revitalizes him mentally and just brings the team up to another environment and we'll see them perform well again in, in the LCK. You mentioned this isn't the first time that SK Telecom completely revamped their roster. In your mind, where does this roster come compare and where does it rank up against the other ones in recent years? I think that it's not as good as some of their previous rosters, particularly if you look at the one that went on to win the World Championship for their first time in Season 3. That was a star-studded roster of Impact and Bangi and Faker and Piglet and Pumandu. And a lot of those players have gone on to be very successful. Impact is one of the highest played players in all of North America. He's a very veteran, very good, strong player. Uh, Faker obviously has built his legacy after that. He was very young at the time when he won that first world championship. And Piglet as well has, has gone abroad and had some success. Um, it put some downfall as well. Versus a lot of the other Korean teams, I'm not sure how they stack up. So you mentioned the South Korea changes. A lot of those were in-house. But let, let's talk international. You mentioned Gorilla, who more than once has been close to taking home a world title. Heads to Europe, joining a Misfits team that rebuilt their lineup. With his addition and those of Soaz and Fabivin, is Mifit, Misfits finally the best team in Europe in your mind? I think it's been a long time coming. That's an organization that has no shortage of money. Uh, they're invested in by the Miami Heat. They are, in my opinion, one of the best run esports teams in the entire scene. And I think that after so many years of being one of the most competitive teams in Europe, competing for fourth and third and you know really making good playoff runs with players like Alfari and Max Warroad, all of these players that weren't traditionally like you know these legends. Now they have some of those people. Mm -hmm. You look at Soaz. Soaz is one of the most long tenured players in all of this game and he's played at a super high level on multiple teams. He's been close to world championships before, coming in second at the very first League of Legends World Championship, coming in third, fourth at others, and really kind of making a name for himself. And so adding Soaz, definitely an upgrade for Malfari, no questions asked. Maxlore has done a great job at sort of making a name for himself since coming into the League with Misfits and uh, playing on Rock Hat briefly, I believe. And then now I, he has really done a, uh, a good service to himself. I'm very excited to see him stick with his team. I think that was the right call to sign a longer contract extension. Fabivin, in my opinion, if he goes back to the form that he played when he was in Europe and not North America, he's one of the best mid laners in the scene. There's, you know, there's one of my first ever esports tournaments in person. I got to see him take down Faker and kill Faker solo, which was just incredible. It was this moment of just, you know, this guy that's only played the game professionally in a professional league for six months, just like wipes the floor with Faker, and everybody was so excited. Um, you look at Fabivin, and that's an exciting upgrade as well. So we definitely have a lot to look forward to in the spring split. A lot of new faces 
Hindu places. That's it from us here at the ESPN studios. He's Jacob Wolf. I'm Phil Murphy. For more of Jacob's reporting, be sure to keep it locked on ESPN.com slash esports.